Hey folks, today I'm going to do a beginner's guide to Docker Compose. Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. It allows you to define services, volumes, and networks in a single file and then spin up the entire environment with a single command. Basically, it means you can spin up your entire environment with one easy command instead of multiple more difficult commands. So let's jump in and get started. For this demo, I'm going to use a .NET API that connects to a Postgres database. And in the intro, I mentioned that Docker Compose is for spinning up multi-container applications, and that's exactly what this is. This is a multi-container application because it has one container that runs the API and one container that runs the database. This is a pretty common scenario that I actually run into. If I'm developing a UI, I generally have an API that it talks to, and that API relies on a database which means in order for me to work on my UI, I need to have the API running and the database running. So I'll quickly show you the Docker commands I would have to run to get the API and the database started, and then I'll go through how to convert that into Docker Compose. This is a Docker file for my API. It's actually a migrations demo API that I used in a previous video. And so I'll jump over to a terminal and we'll get started. I'll do a quick ls just to show that. You can see here I'm in the root with my Docker file and the folder that has my EF Migrations demo project inside of it. The first thing I would always have to do is get my database started. The Docker command to get my database started would be something like this. Docker run, I'll give it a name of migrations db, pass in an environment variable for the Postgres password, which is like and subscribe. I have to map the ports, so 5432, on the host, 25432 inside the container. I generally give it a volume so I don't lose the data when I remove the container. I'll call the volume migrations data and it maps to this folder inside the container. I run it in detached mode and I want to run the image called Postgres. Okay, so that's the first command that gets my database started. The next thing I have to do is build and run the API. The commands for that are docker build, I'll give it a tag name of EF migrations, and it's the Docker file in the current folder. Then the command to run that is docker run. I'll map it to port 5001 on the host and 80 inside the container. I'll run it in detached mode. I'll give it a name of EF migrations. And then I want to run the image we just created called EF migrations. Here are those two running containers, the migrations database and the EF migrations API. And if I go check out volumes, you can also see that migrations data is here and it was just created. And you can see that there's quite a few steps there that it took me to get this up and running. And there's also a lot of room for error there. I might forget some of the options. I might put in the wrong password. So now let's show how we would do this using Docker Compose. Similar to how Docker needs a Docker file in order for you to build an image, Docker Compose needs a file to know what to do. And that file is called docker-compose.yaml. In this example, since I'm using this to run the API in the database, I'm going to put this Docker Compose YAML file in the root of my API folder. So I'll go ahead and say, Add a new file, call it docker-compose.yaml. In Docker Compose, you define services. And think of a service as a different piece of your application. So in our case, the API is one service and the database is another service. Just so that we have a reference, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to paste in those two commands that we used earlier in Docker Run so that we have them as a reference and make sure that we do the same thing. So that's the Docker Run for the database. Here's a Docker Run for the API. The first thing we define in the compose file is the services. And the first one we'll do is a database. In our example, we gave the container a name of migrations DB. The way that works in compose is you just give that the name of your service. So we'll just say migrations DB, and then we define all of the things for that service underneath it. The first thing that we passed in was the environment variable for the Postgres password. And you can do that in compose by saying environment. And this is an array, so you say dash, and then you give it the name, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this because it's the syntax is the exact same. So Postgres password equals like and subscribe. So you go back and you can say ports, and this is also an array. And this one you need to put into quotes, so 5432, 25432. And then the next thing we defined was a volume. And this is also a property, so you just say volumes, and it's an array. When we ran this earlier, we gave it a named volume called migrations data. And there's different ways you can define volumes in Docker. You can also give it a path to a folder on the host. So I'm actually gonna do that in this example. I'll give it a folder and then we'll come back and we'll talk about named volumes a little bit later. So for this volume, I'm gonna say dot slash data and then that maps to the same folder that we used earlier. And what this means is instead of Docker creating a named volume of migrations data for you, it's just going to put, oops, I misspelled that. 
it's going to put this volume in a folder on the host called data. And then the last thing we did is we used the Postgres image. So I'll say image is Postgres. The order that you specify these different options aren't important, but I do like to have the image at the top. This is just a personal preference, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here. And now we have a Docker Compose file that will run our database for us. Let's go run this and see how it works. And the command to get this started is just docker compose up. And now you can see that our database is up and running. Since I didn't run this in detached mode, it's still attached and so it's spitting out all the logs. And you can see the last thing it says is the database system is ready to accept connections. So this database is all set up and ready to go. And you can see that that command is a lot easier to remember. It's just docker compose up. And you don't have to type out the whole docker run command or paste it from somewhere else. It just makes it a lot easier. Now that this is up and running, the different commands that you can run against this are almost the exact same as what you would do with just plain Docker. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control C to stop this container. And if you say Docker Compose PS, that's the same as running Docker PS, which lists all the running containers. And you can see right now there's nothing that's running. And if I run Docker Compose PS A, that will show all the containers even if they're not running. And this is the name that it created for our container ef migrations demo dash migrations db dash one. And the reason it gives it this name is ef migrations demo is the root folder where I'm running this from. So by default, it will add the folder name to the front of the container name. And then dash migrations db, migrations db is the name of the service that we gave it in the compose file. So if we go back into the compose file, you can see migrations db is the name that we gave it right here. And you can see, and then the image is Postgres, the, the entry point command, and then the service name. And the service name should always match this. And since this container is stopped, we can start it the same way you can start a container with Docker. So if we say docker compose start, that's going to start all the containers defined by the docker compose file in this directory. So now you can see that it started. So if I say docker compose ps, now it's actually running. And now I can also stop it. So docker compose stop. Another command that you're going to use pretty frequently is docker compose down. And docker compose down is going to remove the container, any volumes, any networks, and any images that are attached to it. So you can see here that this container was removed, this network was removed, and we'll talk about networks a little bit later. And basically docker compose down is the command that you would use to clean up after you're done. All right, so now let's talk about the API. Let's go into our docker compose file and we'll add our API so that it will build and run that container for us. Now what we want to do is we want to add this service into our Docker Compose file. So I'll go back so that we're on the same indentation level as the migrations DB. And here we called it EF migrations. So I'm going to give it the same name, EF migrations. I'm also going to paste in the build command that we used because unlike the image for Postgres, which was already built and we can pull down from the Docker hub, the image for our API is defined by our Docker file. And so we have to build it. And when we built it, we just said Docker build, we gave it a tag name of EF migrations, and then we just said it's in the current working directory. And the way that you do that in Docker compose is the build command. All you have to do is use the build command and then give it the path to where the Docker file is. And in our case, it's in our current folder. So this is all we have to do for the build. We don't have to give it a tag name because it's gonna do all of it at the same time and it's gonna take care of it for us. Let's move on now to the different things that we passed in for the run command. So the first thing we passed in was the port mapping. And just like we did for our database, we're gonna map it in the same way. So we're gonna say ports, we put it in quotes and on the host it's 5001 and then inside the container it's port 80. And that's really all we have to do in order for this to run. However, I'm gonna add a couple more things. I'm gonna open up the Explorer here and I'll show you that inside of here, I have a couple different app settings files. And this file here, appsettings.compose.json is specifically for running this inside Docker Compose. And I wanna make sure that when we run this, it uses this file and I'll get into why here in just a little bit. And the way that .NET does that is by using an environment variable. So just like above, I'll say environment and the name is ASP.NET Core environment and the name of that is compose and one really cool thing about docker compose is that you can specify the order in which it starts these different services for you and since our api depends on this database we need to tell docker compose that and it's actually super easy so you can say depends on and this is an array and you give it the name of the service in our case it was migrations db the name that you use inside of depends on is the name of the service which is this right here and that's all we have to put in this Docker Compose file for these two things to run. Now let's go back to our terminal and actually run this again. 
When I ran this for the database, I just ran docker compose up. However, since we have to build an image for our API, we need to run docker compose build first. And this is going to run the build command from our docker compose file for our API. And now that image is built, so now we can run docker compose up. And I purposely didn't run this in detached mode because I want to show you how it prints out the logs for all of the services inside your Docker Compose. So here are the logs for the API and here are the logs for the database. Now that this is up and running, I can go to the API to my Swagger page and just prove that it's up. So if I go to localhost 5001 to Swagger, you can see that here is a Swagger page for my API that's up and running. And if I open up persons and say, try it out, and execute. I don't actually have anything in my database. I did run my migration script behind the scenes, but you can see it is connecting. It's returning a 200. It's just an empty array. So that means that our API is up and running, our database is up and running, and they can talk to each other. And I want to talk about how these are actually communicating with each other. And I showed in my Docker Compose for my API how I use a different app settings file. Let's go take a look at that and I'll explain why. In my app settings file, I am defining the connection string for my API in order to connect to that Postgres database. And you can see that the host I have localhost. And this is how you would normally define this if you're running this from your computer. So if I had Postgres running natively on my computer, or even if I have it running inside of Docker using just Docker run, this is how you define it. You define it as connecting to localhost. However, when you run things inside of Docker Compose, it creates a network and it puts all of your services inside that one network. And so when the API is running and if it tries to connect to localhost, localhost would be its own container and there's nothing inside of its own container on port 5432 that it can connect to, which means what you have to do is you have to change your connection. The only difference is the host. Instead of localhost, you give it the name of the service that you defined inside of your Docker Compose file. And here you can see I have my host is migrations DB, which if we go back to the Docker Compose file is the name of the service that we defined right here. And networks inside of Docker and Docker Compose is pretty complicated, that's, that's beyond the scope of this video. But one way to think about this is how you would connect to that database if you were on a network inside your house or at work. So for example, if I have a server running inside of my house or at work called, let's just call it prod SQL 01, that name is the name that we would use to connect to it. So instead of migrations DB, that name would just be prod SQL 01. And so that's how I generally think about it. I, th I think about these containers that are running inside this network as individual computers on a network inside of your house, for example, because basically that's what they are. And I do want to quickly show how that network is created under the hood inside of Docker. I'm going to run docker compose up dash D so that we can get those containers up and running in detached mode. And now if I say docker network LS, it's going to list all the networks that are currently inside of Docker. And this one right here, EF migrations demo has the same name as what we saw before. And so this is actually the network that it creates when you run docker compose up. And if I run docker network inspect, and then I give it that name migrations demo underscore default, this will give us all the details about that network. And there's a whole bunch of stuff in here that I don't want to get into, but the thing that's important is you can see inside of this containers object, it lists all the containers that are inside this network. And you can see that the migrations DB and the EF migrations API are both inside of this network. And that is how the API is able to talk to the database. The last thing I want to talk about is volumes. When we ran our Postgres database using Docker run, we gave it a named volume. However, when we defined it inside of our Docker Compose, we gave it a folder. So let's go look at the differences and how we can use each one of those. Here is the definition for the volume that we used when we ran it in Docker Compose. And this means use a folder called data inside the current working directory. However, when we ran it down here from Docker run, we gave it a named volume. So here is the root folder. And you can see inside of here is a folder called data, which is what this folder right here is. And inside of it are all of the folders and the data that Postgres uses to manage and run its database. And when we run this using Docker Compose, this is a volume that's being used. But when we ran this using Docker Run, it had this named volume. If I go into Docker Desktop and I go to Volumes, there's Migrations Data. And this is that named volume that we used earlier. And when I run databases using Docker, I really prefer to use named volumes. And the reason for that is, if we go back into our folder here, this folder is inside of the folder where our application is. And if for some reason this folder got deleted, you would lose all of your data. Now in a development environment, it's probably not a big deal, 
but it's also not ideal. So let's go in and convert our Docker Compose file to use a named volume instead. So if I come in here to volumes and I change this to migrations DB to have the same name as what we used before, let's see what happens. Back in the terminal, I'll run Docker Compose up again. And when I run that, you can see it says service migrations DB refers to an undefined volume migrations DB invalid compose project. And the reason it does that is because named volumes for Docker Compose have to be defined at a top level block. So if we go back to our Docker Compose file, we need to define that volume here. So if I say volumes, we need to give it a name that matches this. So I'll just say migrations DB. And for now, I'm just gonna leave it just like that. I'll go back, I'll run Docker Compose again, and now you can see that that ran correctly. But let's go into Docker Desktop and see what it actually did. And you can see this is a migrations, oh. And I just realized I gave it a different name earlier. So let me go back really quick and fix that. So now back in Docker Desktop, you can see that it has a similar name, but it's not the exact same. It's migrations data, just like this one, but it also added EF migrations demo to the front of it, which is the exact same thing it does when it creates names for containers. And you may not care about this. If it creates this name that way, it's just fine. However, in my case, I already had a volume there that I can use and I wanna use that volume because it already has a bunch of my data inside of it. And that's actually really easy to do. So here we have our definition for the migrations data volume. If we just add external true, if we save this and run this, it'll use the same volume that we had before. So I'll go back to the terminal. I'll say Docker compose down. It's gonna clean everything up for me. I am going to delete this volume again, just to show that it doesn't recreate it. And if I come back in here and I say Docker compose build, I'm also gonna add D for detached mode. So now it's up and running. If I go back into volumes, you can see that it didn't recreate that volume with the other name that it was using before. And so now it's using this volume right here, migrations data. All right, so that's a really high level overview of what Docker Compose is. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. If you wanna see another video where I go into a little bit more depth about a lot of the other options with Docker Compose, let me know down below. If there's something you think that I left out that's really important for beginners, please let me know down below. And I really appreciate you guys watching this video. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.